Brothers Brettspiele. <laughs> Today we're talking about broom service. Yes. <laughs> Come, darlings. Ooh, scary. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go fast to the rules, okay? I'm known for being a witch, for the record. Should I do the rules? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. In broom service, you play exactly seven rounds, determined by this event deck. At the start of each round, you flip over the first event, read it out loud so everybody knows exactly what will happen at the end of the round. And then everybody is at the same time, simultaneously, choosing out of his 10 cards, everybody has the same 10 roll cards, four rolls for the round. Let's say this one here, putting them and then starting with the first player, whoever is the first player, he picks one out of his four cards and play the card. The differences of these cards are there are witches, this one here, witches allows you to fly around the board from one area to an adjacent area. And when you take the uh, forest witch, you go into the forest. You also have druids. Druids allows you to deliver potions in the area where you are. So let's say you're a blue player, then you can, when you take the right uh, druid, deliver a potion to this little uh, tower here, and the color of the roof determines the potion you have to deliver. There are also gatherer. Gatherer just simply gather resources, which could be purple, green, or orange potions or magic wands. And the last role you have is a weather, weather fairy. And the weather fairy allows you to destroy these clouds and collect these lightning bolts. And lightning bolts are victory points at the end of the game. The only way to get victory points in that game is by either deliver potions, and it starts from one up to over here, 10 points for delivering, or at the end of the game for collecting a lot of these lightning bolts. That's the only way to get victory points. Whenever you play a card, you can pick either play this role brave, the upper part, or coward, the lower part. When you decide to play it coward, you take immediately your action. When you take the brave uh, part, then you have to wait. Next player must, like in any other trick game, follow the, uh, the role. If he has that, can decide coward or brave as well. If he decides to take, take it brave, you can take no action at all. Uh, again, when you take a coward one and he takes a coward one, then one takes a brave one, another two takes coward, everything is fine, he gets his brave action. The difference between brave and coward could be huge. For gatherer, for an example, when you gather a brave, you gather three uh, resources. When you do it coward, you only gather one. However, if you're a last player in turn, you know exactly there's no player behind you who can take that brave, so you will take it brave and take three times the resources. Whoever uh, plays his last card brave will be the next first player. At the end of seven rounds, whoever has the most victory points obviously will win the game. And that's Broom Service. Thank you Brunhilda for, do <laughs> Thank you, Brunhilda, for doing the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks so much. Okay, <laughs> Let, let's talk about the components. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what is your uh, meaning about the components? Well, I think the artwork on the cards is pretty adorable as far as um, the little pictures of the druids and the witches. It's got some really cute artwork. The cards are cards. Um, the potions, nice and standard. I wish the the wands. It'd be nice if those were another wooden token as well. True. Um, but otherwise, as far as the bits goes, there's these cute little witch meeples, and those are great. The artwork's cute on the board, so I would say, uh, you know, it's pretty standard. Yeah, for me, it's functional. It's I, I totally agree. Everything is fine. Um, I always calculate a little bit. It's 
from price wise uh, on the cheaper side of the games mm -hmm. so I see why it's not super thick cardboard or super uh, a super large uh, game board so I and I always appreciate if a game is cheap and not 80 or 90 bucks so I like it as it is mm -hmm. yeah it's fine I okay, um I have to say a little bit about, about critics for the game so this game for me we played it three four times so far and um, every time when we played it with five players you had at least one or two players who are thinking about and overthinking and stretching the game. Even right. if the game is only seven rounds, which yeah. sounds, you can play it, bam, in one, right. 110, right. 120. Well, it, you, action, yeah, analysis paralysis could be a problem. You've got 10 different cards to consider each round. And then when you play the card, everyone has to follow suit, essentially. But then they have to decide if they want to go coward or brave. And so then I'm looking at your face. And do you look like that you've played coward? Do you look like you've played brave? And that can really add to the time um, especially if you're playing with children if you're playing with people who are doing a lot of number crunching on the board uh, that can definitely speed up the time as well for sure yeah and we had always e even if we played with adults play like they have this four cards still on the hand and mm -hmm. please play down the card and this is right now a pink card so and they are double I have no pink card and they are double checking no uh, yeah no no before they decided no you could speed up that and skip just 10 seconds but they need 10 seconds to double check if they have this exactly card right so and and those 10 seconds are critical yeah they are if no, you have, over the over the yeah, length I'm correct, kidding, yeah. yeah you know you're right the over the length of the game it can really slow down the game even yeah. if you've played the game a lot especially if you played a game the game a lot and you're familiar with it and you're really trying to plan out your route and your strategy that can definitely speed it slow down the game yeah that's that's okay. true okay <sighs> sadly um, you know the other thing that we've talked about as far as a problem with the game that we think is that there's definitely a <laughs> <laughs> when we were conniving and planning, oh my darlings, Go ahead. there's a runaway leader problem, <laughs> which not so great sometimes. Um, if someone's fallen behind in the game, it can be very, very difficult for them to make up that ground, especially if you know luck can be a huge factor in the game. You can just you know get. I when we played last week, I had two bad rounds in the in a row where I just got nothing that the plan I had just was blown to bits and so that can be really really frustrating when it just doesn't happen for you and so because of that um, if you fall behind it's really hard to catch back up yeah for me um, I wanted to jump on your side and on the other hand not um, because for me it's either you can play this game super serious mm -hmm. then there's an advantage for being first player because you exactly get the order of your first card. True. So you can decide which action will be first. That could be critical if you must move over to the uh, planes mm -hmm. before you take the action uh, of lightning bolts, for an example. Well, but on the other hand, if you're deciding to do that coward, and coward actions are super weak if you compare that to brave mm -hmm. ones, so you are screwed up. Again, if you take that super serious and think and overthink every single move, which takes a lot of time right. and slows down the game, then this game has a good balance. But if you're just playing it like other players, Ticket to Ride, just doing some moves and ch uh, talking and mm -hmm. chatting uh, alongside, uh, that is a really nasty factor. But that's how I beat you. Because you were serious and I was mm -hmm. just chit chatting. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I mean, that, well, no, but I was, I was doing a lot more. When the second time we played this, I was doing a lot more planning, analysis on the board, where other players had their pawns, the cards that I wanted to play, and then at the end, positioning myself so that I was in the most valuable corner. And you're right, by being having first player and just coward, coward, just was able to just claim that last round. I think what 19 points, um, yeah. and considering that. I was uh, 20, 21 points ahead of the person behind me. Obviously, that was a really good idea. But I had, but there was definitely luck along the way that let me, 
you know, maneuver into that position. I got a bunch of clouds that helped too. Um, but I, but I, but I think the difference in this game is if you want to win, you have to do some analysis of the board, and that, that's true. That that's will, true. And that will slow you down. If you just want to play and woo, see what happens. But honestly, I don't think the game on its own is like so fun to play that you don't really care who wins. Um, I think if you really want to win, you have to do some number crunching, and that can slow things down. On the other hand, what what is always for me a little bit yeah a little bit frustrating on the game, but also fascinating is some of these cards the um, gatherer mm -hmm. the difference between uh, coward and brave is super uh, swingy. So either you get three resources or one. So it's triple the time right. of the strength from coward and uh, brave. However, uh, when you just play a potion down uh, in a good position like mm -hmm. here where you get 10 points for a potion, uh, the difference is between 10 and 13. That's not so right. super swingy. Right. So there are cards, they are really, really powerful when you are doing that brave right. and others not. So um, that also encourage AP, mm -hmm. which also slows down the game. Right. We both had rounds where um, the first round you collected a large amount of resources. I think second or third round I did the same. I collected a large number of resources and just collecting enough from that basically carried me all the way through the yeah, game. That's so true. if you can have a really strong round like that, then you can take that a long distance, literally. Oh, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the mechanics. So the mechanic of programming cards is not super new. Mm. Technically, there are a lot of uh, other games with right. programming cards right. in this world. Right. Um, having 10 rolls is, yeah, not good. What I really like on the mechanics is a ca uh, coward or brave, mm -hmm. even if that is a lot of frustration in it always. Right. Almost every single turn when you are choosing brave, it's super frustrating when someone else takes the same action and crush you. Well, but what I like about it, though, is you did have the option to go coward. So in <laughs> some ways, you can't be totally mad at other people. You made the decision because in the game that precedes this, um, Viva Hack Store, uh, Witch's Brew, it plays a little bit differently. And so I like this, I like this method better because if you don't get what you want, it is your fault. You just would have gotten less. Yeah. That's true. It's very German. It is a German game, it obviously. Is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the replayability? Um, I've played this uh, three times now, and I enjoy it. I like, um, I like the cards. I don't know that for me, this is one that I would probably want to get to the table a lot. I think of this came up every now and then. It's nice. It's it's kind of fun to have. Um, the player interaction where you're trying to decide what other people are going to play or during the round when you play a card to see if they go brave or coward. But for me, it's not one that has like a really high replayability. I mean, I would say, I, I would give it a three out of five. If you wanted to play this with me, awesome, I'll play this with you. It's no problem. Would I want to do it, you know, more than once every couple months? I don't know. I would put that always out of the shelf if I have the same group playing this game again and again and everybody knows exactly what to do and everybody is a fast player. In this game I really hate when someone is slowing that down because I'm usually a fast player and I'm always waiting for other players. I don't really took that super serious. I was, I, I guess you beat me every single time so I don't know exactly but I, I'm pretty sure. Um, by 25 points the last game for those of you that want to yeah. do math on the board it still hurts honey it still hurts <laughs> you don't have to say that over yeah. and over again yeah only because i crushed right. you all the other games but anyway <laughs> okay let's let's put that aside so if we have the same group and we would play it again and again and everybody knows exactly how the rules are everybody plays it fast then i would play it again and again mm -hmm. and again and i would love the replayability of these event cards here um, 10, you pick 7, you have the advanced rules, right. everything is fine with that, but for me, right. you have to play it with 
experienced players. Yeah, and I would say for me, generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of event decks. I don't like, you know, you're playing, you know, you're Is playing. Is it too swingy for you? It can be way too swingy and just blow everything to bits. Okay. But I would say in this game, I would say that's actually one of the things I like best about this, that you really have the opportunity to take advantage of some not so great situations by virtue of what's on the card. You know, that you can, instead of going brave or coward, that you can take a resource that we saw that this round, depending on where you were positioned on the board you could gain or lose points we saw that twice this game you know so um, I for one would say without the event deck that it would be much less enjoyable because it is nice it, it, because otherwise you could learn the board you would know your pathways it would be I think it would be the same game over and over and over again so the event deck definitely for me is probably what keeps this game fun and fresh yeah, that's true. Because witches love it, fun and fresh. But keep in mind, there's a second side of the board and the other oh, uh, right. advanced. Of the amulets, and yeah. which we didn't even get to. That's true. That's true. Okay, come. Then let's go to the point system, to the whatever you wanted to say. For me, I'm I'm just jumping out of the box first. Uh, for me, it's a recommendation. It has still enough meat on it, still enough replayability. But it's not a super high recommendation. But it's a good old Euro. It has a good feeling. Theme is strong enough for me that I would say, yeah, it's for me it's a fun game. It's a pure recommendation. Mm. I would say for me, recommendation too good. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't I probably won't buy this one. <laughs> I wouldn't buy this one, but if somebody else had it, they wanted to play it, yeah, I'll play it. Keep with in you. mind it's only forty bucks. It's $40 for other games I like better. Oh, you know? that's true. No, I, I like the game. I like the game. I like the witch theme. I like, you know, I like, the, I like, I do like the cards, how it plays out. I like that, unlike Witch's Brew, um, it gives you some more decisions to think about as far as where you go on the board. And, you know, you can use that as a whole other level of decision making. I do. I like it. I wouldn't buy it, but I like it. And I'll play it with you if you have it. So, uh, just to clarify that, because you mentioned Witch's brew Which for the brew. third time I guess. Viva Hexed. Uh, you would pick this over which brew or not? I would pick Witch's Brew over this game. Oh, okay. okay. I would. I would. Witch's Brew has, um, it's really just about the cards. I mean, there's some other, um, um, there's some other cards that you use for scoring. Uh, but generally speaking, um, it's about these cards, playing these cards. It's a much faster game. You do not have the AP like you do in this one. All right, good. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. And we talked about <laughs> Witches Brew. Bye bye guys. Bye. Ooh, bam. That was so not German. That was. <laughs>